Fitzgerald will not be back. Um, so I will call the meeting to order and we will have our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, the flag, to the flag, the flag of the United States of America, States of America and to the Republic, Republic for which, which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. As you were. Uh, roll call. You just give me an aye, aye when your uh, name is called. Matt Gifford? Aye. Lori Jones? Aye. Alan Kibbe? Aye. Jeff Mangles? Aye. Chris McDonald? Aye. Mike Matthews? Aye. And Chris White? Aye. All right. We do have a quorum. Um, Amelia, is there anybody for public comment? We do not have anyone watching our meeting right now. So unless any of the commissioners have any public comment, I don't think so. Wow. Moving right along. Laurie Jones, approval of the minutes. Yep. Hopefully everybody's had a chance to take a look. Are there any further edit to be made? Is there a motion? The minutes of the May 22nd meeting. So moved. Someone, anyone? Second. Thank you. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You guys in favor? Aye. Um, any opposed? Any? Oh. Uh, okay. That's it. Thank you. I think you're muted, Alan. Alan, we we can't hear you. You are muted. There you go. Uh, yeah, in the absence of Dr. Pitto this evening, uh, Captain Gifford is going to uh, chair the application review committee meeting. Matt, thank you, sir. Um, just a couple things. Uh, Amelia, was there anyone like John Hiltz or any of the other engineers? Did anyone jump on to present? I guess. No, I don't see anyone, you know, on our side, and there's still no attendees. Okay. Um, well, we'll kick off with 13 Seabreeze. Uh, this is actually a pre-submission application, um, so they're not looking for anything specific. Um, construct a four-foot by 38-foot piling supported uh, timber pier with a 16-inch wide ladder, uh, three-foot by 30-foot aluminum ramp, and an eight foot by 20 foot piling anchored timber floating dock for private recreational boating. Um, do you guys want me to share my screen or do, do you guys have this information? Um, it'd be easiest if you shared your screen, I think. Yeah, that's what I was. Let me know if you guys can see that. I right. guess we yeah. can. Okay, so basically, you know, pre-submission consulting uh, request. I thought John Hiltz was going to be on here, but um, again, you know, here's the very generic information. Um, let me scroll down to some of the pictures. Um, this is the location. Um, Chris, is, that, is it technically Harborview that the the neighborhood is? I believe Seaview is Harbor. Har sea Harbor View is the one directly above Manresa. Correct. I, I couldn't tell it which which I know that's kind of right on the border between the two, right? Right. Um, so this this would be the area in question. Uh here is the dock that they're talking of. Um Alan, were, were there any shellfish commissioners on today, too? Uh, I don't see uh, Steve Parkish either. But. Um, so this, you know, this was the this is the only question mark about 
um, you know, depth along these these areas um, that we had questioned. Could I, I interrupt just for a second? Yeah, yeah. go ahead, Jeff. Jeff, on on that drawing, that that um, the, the pier that you pointed out is an existing structure. Correct. What they're planning, what they're planning to do is where the, where you see the flagstones. Yep. Just to the yeah is to put their new structure. So the, exactly. ne the next one, the next drawing shows the the uh, the proposed plan. Yeah, this was just kind of a view of seeing what the neighbor has um, yes. to understand what's in that in that space. Um, and then you've actually got this in reference to this is existing. Yeah. This would be the new. Okay. Um, and, and he's shown the extended littoral lines and, and the setback is consistent with our you know our, our guidelines um, but we don't have we don't have uh, the benefit of comments yet from the shellfish commission correct and that, that's the only reason why i want to see if steve or anybody was on um because i know in that area they've had you know some concerns um so before again this is this is you know pre so it, it's I, I don't think there's anything formal that we're looking to do other than um you know ask them to respond back when it's finalized but um, this is this is the generic drawing that we're looking at. Let me finish. Steve is finishing up some some uh, work related. Well, I guess I I frozen here. No, sorry. I think we got you now, Jeff. Yeah, Steve. Steve was finishing up some some work uh, tasks. He was, he was going to try to join us as, as quickly as he can. But oh, okay, our, our the normal approach, if we had no objections, would would be to to write to the applicant and simply say we have no objections to the to the proposed plans being included in an application to DEEP, reserving our right to continue to review it and including the right to um, review any comments provided by the Shellfish Commission. But but there is that that consultation form that requires a signature, and the the um, if we don't have objections to it moving forward, we would just say no no objections to it moving forward to a permit application. Uh, with with that, do we want to have a vote on this, or do we want to wait for Steve? Our our vote would be. Uh... Pending approval from the uh, Shellfish Commission. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm getting at. Is it's it's you know one one versus the other. It's in, uh, look at right. the same for me. Um, so with with that, can I get a motion to you know push forward that we have no get uh, objection to this application uh, going to DEP and as usual we're going to reserve the right to review this uh, when it becomes a full application and also make sure that Shellfish has their say to review this as well. Um, I'll make that motion. And a second? I'll second it. Perfect. Okay, and the second will just jump right over to 14. Uh, 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 yeah. We need a vote. Need Matt, a vote. I'm sorry. You need to call for a vote. Could sorry you, about that. Um, could, could there be I'm, a I'm discussion just, I'm, first? I'm, I'm, just, I'm just a stand-in. Um, Jeff, do you want to have any discussion first? Nope. Just the, the other alternative would be to table this until next month uh, to to, have, to uh, allow the applicant to come in and and, and answer any questions. You know, it seems to me to be a fairly straightforward uh, application. And they, they have. And they, it seems fairly straightforward. And they have to go uh, we have through the... It with the applicant. Yeah, it seems fairly straightforward. They also this has to go before the shellfish commission anyway outside of this review is it is it right. not <clears throat> i mean i i, I see no reason why we don't send this over to steve and have him take a look at it and you know just verify but i i don't think it's pretty straightforward i don't think we really have any objection unless they do and that's part of our statement Mm -hmm. Well, they, they have their own separate consultation, right? I mean, we not, they're not yeah. part of our consultation, right? Right. So we can have no ob objection, and they can they have their own uh, review that they do yeah. on this. Independent Correct. of ours. Okay. 
on that note, um, we already have a motion uh, by Chris, seconded by Jeff. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay. Um, issue number two is 14 North Point Drive, uh, and this is a COP. Um, so I'll go through the the description and then the picture. So this site consists of a mortared stone wall atop a riprap um, area. Riprap diminishes along the west side of the property, and it's a deteriorating timber ramp and a floating dock extend uh, towards the, the water side of this wall. Um, I'm going to fast forward to the picture just to show you it's not what we normally see. Um, so this is this is the question here. So you've got an embedment of stone, you've got a floating dock, and you've got a, a basically an old ramp. Um, what they're looking to do from that description is replace this uh, the three by twenty timber ramp, the twelve by twenty six timber floating dock, and the retention. Um, they're looking to replace all that. New ramp hinge will be mortared into the existing stone by workers in the upland. The new ramp and floating dock will be prefabricated at the contractor's yard and towed to the site by workboat on a high tide. The existing ramp, floating dock, and anchors will be removed. The new ramp, floating dock, anchors, and anchor chains will be installed by workers on the workboat. The existing ramp, floating dock, and anchors will be towed from the site by workboat on a high tide and disposed of in the contractor's yard. Um, so again, this isn't kind of our one of our standards, but I wanted to show that picture before um, we went into discussion. Um, go through some of the other drawings. I'm sure you guys will have some questions. So again, this is the existing condition. As you can see, I'm not seeing those. Oh, there I am. Okay, now I can see the existing. And here is a, I think this is the, I can't believe this is, this is east, east looking, okay. You can also see the anchor here. And then this is kind of a horrible aerial photo, but um, I thought there was, I thought there was a drawing associated with this. So again, this is all the way up in the back. You can see here is an, another view. That's a little bit better. Um, yeah. this is all the way in the back behind Shorehaven, uh, along old Saugatuck road. Um, and this is the little neighborhood, uh, Marina, so to speak of. So this is a very, very, um, you know, title dependent area. So here's a little bit more of the drawing that I wanted to get at. Um, Jeff, did you have any questions specifically about this part either? The, well, this is a certificate of permission application. So it's Correct. necessary to provide, you know, to act on this as, as, so, as soon as we can. Um, they, they are also asking to retain some riprap that was previously put along the shoreline in, in the intertidal area without permission. And they're saying that that, that predates 1995. Um, Correct. So, and we also, they also attest that there's, there's, it's not the subject now of any enforcement action. So I think that's one understanding. If, if we had no objection to this, that we would, one understanding is that it's not subject to any enforcement action. And that the, the, the riprap that was placed without permission predates the harbor management plan. Um, and, and there, but 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 by agreeing to this, we're not we're not setting a precedent that other work that's not permitted would be allowed in the future. And also provided that any comments that may be provided by the Shellfish Commission are properly addressed in in the application process. But it seems that the, the existing structure is permitted. They're 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 proposing to replace it and then authorize after the fact the old placement of riprap. It seems like we'd have no objection to that with, with those understandings that, that I 
mentioned. So they're they're not doing any upland or riprap work, or they're just ask they're just asking for acknowledgement that previous work had to, been to done. Retain retain the retain previous it. work that predates nineteen ninety five. Okay. They said okay, this so gets going to be floating, and, and will it sit on the bottom? That was the only question I had. Um, it does. I didn't see seem... anything about stops or anything. I I didn't see anything about that. But if you notice here, it says you know mud and sand. So I don't know, you know, this is the low water mark, but that's awfully close. And I don't see that as being, I mean, maybe this is a deeper spot, but, you know, 0. 0.9, 1.2, 1.1, 0.8. Um, yeah, it's like off to the left. Going to I got that. That is the standard. This the, the standard policy is that no no float or or any vessel tied to that float should rest on the bottom at any stage of of the tide, so that that would apply to this as well. But I don't see anything that says that they're going to do something in place, yeah. uh, put something in place so that that so that the the dock does not sit on the bottom. Yeah. It certainly could. Sir, is this the last home on the creek there? Because again, there's the anchor. Chains out there are kind of a uh, hazard to navigation. It would seem to me too. Um, Chains going. It's it's not the last. No. <clears throat> so, I wish they had a somewhere in between these two views. Um, but yeah, it's all the way tucked in the back. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to get to. Well, I'm I'm looking at another view. There's several. There's one, two, three four or five docks beyond that one. Yeah. You can see one there. <clears throat> well, that, that that's another finding that ab absent, uh, you know, the, the design so that it doesn't rest on the bottom, it would be inconsistent with the harbor management plan. I, I would have thought that John um, would have got on to to go through one or both of these with us um yeah it doesn't say anything about stops or anything like that and i'm not a big fan of throwing out chain with anchor either but you know um yeah, well, uh, i'd rather i'd rather see well, i'd the, rather see piles there but the chain with anchor is right across the what channel there is there and i thought I'm assuming yeah, if you that look would at, be in if, this if direction you, here. Yeah, if you look at the uh, the drawings, it sort of shows the uh, the chain with the anchor. I mean, those have got there to be is, right, right there. in the only navigable waterway. It's yeah. I mean, it, think about it. If if this is that looks pretty dry in through here. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you're coming and going, you're going along this area, and you've got you can see the anchor line there. I'm not sure if, they, if you guys can see it, but there's there's one right there, pretty mm -hmm. clearly. Mm -hmm. Um, so do we, do we kick this back for additional information or what, what would you, what would, any other questions or discussion? Well, this certainly the sitting on the bottom is a question. Uh, that's obvious. And I, I would question the, um, just uh, how those chains are, uh, don't present a hazard to the people on up the Creek, I guess. Um, uh, although this appears to be a public a public beach all the way in here and uh guess the house next door is the last house is it on the i believe so because you see the parking lot there's like a turnaround so you yeah. can you mm. can drive down through here and then people turn around here and you walk down to you know most people in the neighborhood have these vessels here but this is a this is a, a you know a sand turnaround back to the paved road so it's the second to last house before there right well, that well, those boats are those those sort of go out through Bermuda Lagoon. Yeah, these go straight out through Bermuda Lagoon. This other one is is there's a long twisty creek, and it looks like there's a cell to keep that filled. Yeah, low tide. I I can't imagine this is really even navigable. I was going to say kayaks. Do, yeah, yeah. I mean, because it's it's dry half. I mean, that's right. At, all to the left there is the golf course. So like that's yeah, all, this is right here. Yeah. Yeah, literally the the 
the uh, the part Agreed. three on on the on the whole is right over here. Yeah, you know where the where Sagatuck turns. It's literally this is the first house, and they've you know we've voted on a couple of other houses that are along this side now, um, but literally this old Sagatuck is right here. The road comes through right like, right now. What's misleading in your plan drawing is that the anchor chains uh, uh, appear to go uh, off into infinity off the off the corners of that dock, whereas you know it is badly shown, badly drawn. I think because there's no the end to the chains and anchor, you know. Well, the proposed west cross section refers to float skids, and that's sufficient to uh, address our concern about not resting on the bottom at low tide. Uh, is that in the narrative, Jeff? Matt, is that, uh, is that, is there another drawing? Yeah, but... uh, cross section? Yeah, it's it's following these. At least on mine. No skids. There you go. On the west cross section. There we go. Yeah. One more. Where they put them on both both drawings. And they've got a lot of rights as well. Mm-hmm. So they're 20, what's that, 26 feet? Okay. And then you've got 99 feet to the neighbor's dock, corner to corner. Seeing the float skids, then, do we have uh, any objection here? Well, those those anchor chains are shown going across the the, the apparent mm -hmm. littoral rights line. So again, I think there's there's issues with those anchor chains. Um, I mean, they have other they so this one shows other anch other anchors going from the corners back to the land, which is normally what you do when you you know when it's such a small dock you don't use pilings. Um, Right. You know, you probably wouldn't be able to get, you know, you wouldn't be able to get barge up there to put there. it on. Yeah. No, no way. Is, um, You're going on horseback. Yeah. Exactly. You know, Teresa's probably going to be pushing this up here with her whaler, you know, wouldn't even bring her boat up there. Hey, <laughs> boat. So what are the comments? The skids are taken care of, apparently. Um, so do we just have issues with the uh, anchors potentially going on over the littoral rights? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the statement we make is uh, um, we'd like some clarification on, on that issue. Um, other than that, do we have any objection to this or any questions? I just go back to uh, that again. If, if the if, the high tide elevation and uh, between the elevations, the chains are essentially going to be um, on the ground uh, on their littoral side of the plan. Do you know what I'm saying? That's the, the chain is going to be laying on the ground. At, uh, by the time you get out to where the anchor is, it's still going to be flat on the bottom. Any other comments, guys? Could, could you make the statement that that uh, in reiterate the policy that it's a policy of the harbor management plan that no float or any vessel attached to that float shall rest on the bottom at any stage of the tide, um, and other, otherwise would be inconsistent with the harbor management plan, and that also again any any. Uh, Issues that may be addressed by the Shellfish Commission have to be properly addressed by, uh, in, in the review process. It points out the, the issue of, of discussing this without having the ap applicant present to, to yes. uh, answer right. questions. Yeah. 
but I think we have to say something because because again the deep could approve this. Uh, So number one is the issues Without we have with the anchors going past the littoral rights. Uh, number two, we want to confirm that the floats um, are are built to the um, harbor management plan standards. Um, we want to make sure that the Shellfish Commission has uh, their opportunity to review this as well. And <laughs> in the future, we'd, we'd like the applicant to be available or representative of the applicant to be available for questions. And also that no vessel sit on the bottom. Yeah, if there is a vessel, no vessel. Yep. Sitting on the bottom. Yeah, the, I think I think they're they've got their skids shown on the side elevations of the dock. It's it's really just a vessel, isn't it? Yeah. The dock, the chain dock chain frame the anchor. Yeah, and everything I saw on Google, it looks like they've got a couple of stand-up paddle boards and some kayaks on that dock. I don't think you can get yeah. in there with a boat. It's not a lot of water. Yeah. I don't think they're in. I, I think it's the same kind of thing we're running in with the mill pond. Yeah. How do you, how do you, anything that you're going to get in there, you got to carry in and carry out. Exactly. Okay. So the five points are uh, concerns about the anchors going, uh, anchors and lines going past low tour rights, just confirming that there's not going to be any floats uh, sitting on the bottom, confirming there's not going to be any vessels sitting on the bottom. Uh, having shellfish uh, commission review, um, and also if the applicant is available to possibly review any questions with us, and then always um, in a normal language, keeping with the uh, our management plan and the opportunity to review. Yes, fine with me. Yep, that's that's fine with me. Um, okay, sorry, just taking some notes. Um, on that note, can we get a motion to approve? I'll make that motion. All right, Jeff. I'll second. And, and Chris, Chris. White, second. All right. Uh, any discussion? On that note, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? OK. Um, and the third and final item on this is our standing action item about the walk bridge. Um, I didn't know if we wanted to ask um, Bruce Lavallo, Harbor Master Lavallo, if, uh, if you want to give us an update on that or if you want to do it during his his report or if, if there was someone standing in for him tonight I, I i didn't get a chance to talk to him this week um just with a, with a more updated version of of what the ongoing um uh, work is and what potential you know questions or concerns we have yeah i didn't get an update from bruce bruce has got a a, a, a sort of a family medical thing going on right now so he uh, can't can't be here so we do have deputy harbor master lee if if he has any update Mm -hmm. There he is. I'm sorry, Owen. Hey, Owen. How are you, buddy? Didn't see. I didn't see your name there. Owen, mm -hmm. oh, you're muted. And I don't think that there's a uh, a report. So no, why don't, don't we, uh, if, on, on that note, I don't have anything else for the walk bridge. Um, was there any other discussion or any any questions that want to be brought up under that topic? Uh, the only question I ha would uh, want to know is if anybody has heard anything about uh, Eversource, the Deep's uh, decision on the Eversource cable business. I, I was you, going you, up under old business, and, and I, I haven't heard anything on either. I haven't Chris, you're sure. Yeah, Chris okay. is the kind of the contact on that too. I don't believe I've seen anything come through. I was trying to be fairly, fairly uh, judicious with sending that stuff through to you, but let me see. I don't think I've, I seen I've been sort of checking their website from time to time, and I haven't seen anything let me new follow about up. that either. Let me put that on my list.
All set, Chris. Uh, so, Matt, are you all copacetic? Yes, with that, Chairman, back to you. All right. Uh, correspondence. Uh, does anyone have any correspondence? Uh, I do not at this point. Uh, I don't know, Amelia, are you, have you got anything? Uh, no, I have not received guess? anything uh, since last meeting. Well, I guess we get till summer is here, right? Is that maybe what's going on? <laughs> you know, it's, like, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, uh, I guess with no converse correspondence, we'll we'll sort of move ahead. Uh, you know, we're in, we are into the high season. We're just starting. Uh, it's, it's very exciting to see the you know activity in the harbor and all the boats there. And I've been. Out and about, I passed Chris the other day. I was taking, yeah. uh, I was taking some friends' small children out for a, a ride that was supposed to start at about two o'clock, and they didn't get here till four. So we ended up going yeah. full speed to the lighthouse and back to see a lighthouse, and that was, and, and we just beat the rain. But I was going nice to say, I, 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 I dropped the motor to get in before the rain. I saw that cloud coming over, and I, I turned tail, went, went home to it, went back to port. Yeah, it's pretty, but it's nice to be on the water. It's it's exciting, you know, the uh, to see people out. You know, we don't need to admit, put this in the minutes, but I just think it's uh, uh, it's it just shows the result of a lot of hard work from a lot of different uh, people on the commission and people in the city, and it's just, it's just nice to see see us getting going. I think the chair, various chair people, report on their own other activities on their own. The two big items I'll talk about. One is the uh, I've spent quite a bit of time on the on the walk bridge project uh not so much on the walk bridge itself but on the eversource cable relocation i listened to most of the uh, you know all the testimony that was there i listened to it several times uh, i think that we're it's going to be very interesting to see what happens on that front with getting the, the cable underneath the underneath the river uh, and i have no no predictions on that if we haven't haven't heard anything back um the other Big item is the the O and G uh, reactivation of their property and their use of their um, dock facilities. There, um, I've been again listening to all the recorded testimony. There's testimony going on as we speak at uh, with the planning and zoning. People are still still uh, testifying before the P and Z Commission about that. And I'll listen to that tomorrow or Friday. Uh, see what uh, more has been said. It's a very uh, contentious issue within the city, I think. And and I, I think if there were more information out there from uh, various uh, quarters, it would be less contentious because I think there's just a, a lot of information uh, just not hasn't been presented yet. Um, I really don't want to, it's, just, it's not an agenda item. We really, I really don't want to get into too much uh, discussion about that. It was just, um, uh, a lot of things to be considered and, and we, we've really yet to hear from the uh, army corps of engineers who was uh, really in charge of that operation of that waterway as to what their take is uh, and because of the um, they in the way this i understand this waterway federal uh, navigation project to work is that the uh, the yeah, Army Corps calls the shots, and they utilize our harbor master to to enforce and to uh, communicate uh, back. So all that has to be worked out, and uh, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, so I think Alan I has am... actually a planning and zoning uh, meeting about that tonight too. Maybe that's right. Part of the reason that's there right. isn't just... any. Uh, there there wasn't anybody on our meeting. I, I didn't I didn't hear that part, but I, I think oh, there's, I'm sorry. A, yeah. Yeah. there's yes, a there's lot a, of uh, push for that. Testimony testimony going on right now uh uh on this issue. And, I, and I'm gonna I'll when we're done, I'll tune in and, and then listen to the part we missed. Um it's it's you know, there's a there's a lot of very rightful um uh, concern about it. And as I said, I think that the the, the information hasn't been um distributed or disseminated very, very well. So people really understand what's going on and what the, uh, who the active parties really are in this. But uh, I think that will get sorted out. Uh, so staff reports. 
Mr. Owen Lee, are you prepared to speak for Mr. Lavallo? He's chilling in the backyard, as near as I can tell. It looks like it kind of looks like he's being held up by a uh, somebody with a like he's got his hands up. Can't tell. I don't think we have a harbor master's report this evening. Um, this old statement, I guess you're up next. Well, I, I can say that I've been talking with Bruce, and as you, as you know, he has his family issues to deal with. But uh, with, with respect to the, the harbor master's role in the upstream issue with O and G, yeah, yes, the harbor master has a role, but also the harbor management commission does too. So the, the Corps of Engineers relies not just on the harbor master, but pursuant to the harbor management plan, the, the commission has a role and local management of the navigation project to ensure compliance with the open to all and equal terms policy. But regarding the harbor master's uh, authority and what how he can be involved with this, we've been talking with the DEP, uh, which provides oversight to the harbor master because the harbor master is a state official. So a person from deep has agreed to uh, to visit the harbor and, and uh, uh, take a look at the at the conditions upstream with, with the barges and the anticipated barges with the harbor master and the marine police and provide guidance on on how the uh, how we can best go about managing the, the upper harbor to ensure the, uh, that there aren't encroachments and that, that uh, other users of the waterway can, can have uh, safe and efficient operation. So we're waiting on a, uh, it'll be sometime after the uh, July 4th week that, that someone from DEEP will, will visit for that, for that purpose. Um, other things that I could talk about or would talk about is I attended a meeting of the DEEP's uh, Blue Plan Advisory Committee, which is sort of interesting. Uh, the Harbor Management Association had much involvement when the Blue Plan was was uh, was crafted to, to to try to make clear that that the, the Blue Plan has its area of jurisdiction and municipal harbor management commissions have have their areas of jurisdiction. But it's it, it's sort of in listening to the meetings, it sort of sort of confirms what we thought was the purpose of the main purpose of the Blue Plan in in the first place which was to increase the state of Connecticut's role in managing and reviewing proposals for electric transmission lines down the center of Long Island Sound, connecting with the offshore wind, wind uh, generation areas. And in addition to lines that would go to Westchester County, to New York City, there's also thinking ahead that there may be, there may be branch lines that go up to uh, the, the area of the nuclear plant in, in Waterford and maybe in a, another location. So there's nothing really urgent to, to think about with respect to the, the, the blue plan now. Uh, the Norwalk River Watershed Initiative uh, met earlier, um, six people attended, uh, but we had, we had talked is that, that the uh, initiative had received a $100,000 grant from Sea Grant to update the Norwalk River Watershed Action Plan. And which of course this commission had a major role in preparing when it, when it, uh, when it was prepared. However, they didn't get any any consultants to bid on the work. <laughs> they must have thought that it wasn't enough money to do the work. And so we talked about, well, can can you maybe adjust the scope of work without having to do a you know a new glossy plan with you know fancy maps and so forth? Uh, but it's interesting that 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 the, the watershed action plan is not looked at the same way as the harbor management plan as a as a policy document to guide decisions. It's looked at primarily as a document that identifies projects uh, that, that could be developed to protect you know, water, water quality and environmental quality, and, and as a, a document to support uh, requests for funds to implement those projects, sort of interesting. But there, there is a, a grant that they did receive from the Long Island Sound Granting uh, Program uh, to look at urban neighborhoods near, near, the, uh, near the river and, and to, to construct, identify locations for constructing rain gardens, which, which would, uh, again, the, the purpose being to, to uh, hold and uh, storm water. But they haven't identified those, those neighborhoods yet. I guess they're working with uh, the Norwalk River Watershed Association and some other, other city uh, agencies. And, and when I asked if, if, if any of the, the, the potential neighborhoods are within the the coastal area they, they didn't know yet uh, they, they would have to they, they're still looking to identify the the uh, the, the sites um, I mentioned it last week last month about the 
legislative initiatives to, to deal with the siting council's operation. And so that, that bill that's called the Siting Council Reform Act was recently signed by the governor. Uh, again, as a result of the issues that arose in in, uh, in Fairfield, and and legislators who who submitted that bill uh, talked about the purpose being to correct the regulatory bias of the siting council in favor of the utility companies. Uh, so that's doesn't do us any good now, uh, but but um, there are others that had the same opinion and impression of the siting council as we did when when we um, look, looked at the. Uh, well, when we when we went before them, um, the other thing, and Alan mentioned, uh, what what's the status of the Eversource uh, public hearing uh, process? And the only thing I, I would mention, just again, it uh, in addition to the formal comments from the Harbor Management Commission to to Deep concerning the Eversource proposal, also members of the commission submitted a letter expressing concern about the process itself. And, and I think it's it's correct, and not the only person that the process is deeply flawed, and the, and one of the reasons is during the public comment hearing, for for the, uh, for getting public comments on this, the the eversource description of the project lasted less than three minutes and included no maps, no photographs, no diagrams. So anybody from the public who was interested in attending this meeting, uh, public hearing meeting. To try to understand the project would have no clue, because there was there was no no. And at the end of the of the meeting, the the Eversource representative said, "I don't have any maps to show." It, it just it just boggles your mind as if someone came before a, a hearing of planning and zoning or or before this commission or shellfish commission to present a doc proposal, but didn't have any drawing to show where where it was. Um, so I thought that was very interesting. And the other com comment that came out of the, one one of the of the discussions in Fairfield about the utility I think it's a it's an interesting term um, is is the term called regulatory capture where, where their industries are regulated by public agencies overseas and instead of of those agencies, so I thought that term "regulatory capture" was 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 very interesting. The other thing is, I'm I'm working to complete the ship grant application for the for the uh, the city marina at Veterans Park. We put put together a, a compilation of photographs. Um, we've got more work to do. It's due on Monday, uh, so we've got a lot of work still to do. We have we have the cost estimates. Um, um, we have the background information, so it's it's putting together a, a a nice package which we've been which we've been working on, and I've been talking to the port authority about that. We were hoping that the officials from the port authority might be able to visit, look at the at the uh, at the site, but they weren't able to do that. And and, uh, and I've been asked to locate it. Uh, there, there's another item I think we probably should discuss tonight is is the, the pending announcement, if it hasn't been made already today or yesterday, uh, by DEEP of the Boating Infrastructure Grant. Jeff, Jeff you're, you're, I think, familiar with this. That, that's, um, but D, th th these, are, these are funds in a minimum amount of $30,000 that can go for infrastructure improvements to support transient tie transient boating facilities for boats that are 26 feet and, and longer. So it's called a BIG program. So if anyone has any ideas about what, what sort of projects could be thought of about this. So some years ago, we applied for a, and, and received a, a BIG grant for helix, uh, in, well, helical moorings south of the, of, the, uh, of the visitor's dock and also of floats on the visitor's dock. Um, unfortunately, when the harbor was dredged, uh, proper care wasn't taken, and the, the dredger removed the, the helical moorings that cost a lot of money. And, and but we we've subsequently talked about that. And maybe, I think Jeff, you were involved in the discussion, or the mm -hmm. maybe the harbor master was. Um, but 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 that is that won't affect our standing in applying for for another grant. So that that's the question. And do you have do you have any thoughts about a uh, transient boating facilities that 
at least thirty thousand dollars that we could apply for through through this grant. I mean, we could talk about that, you know, after the meeting or in, in the next week or so. Um, but as of last week, Deep had not yet announced the, the you know, the applications are due. They, they they plan to do that in the near future, and I haven't checked with the administrator this week to see if she if she's done it yet, uh, yet this week. So that's that's my uh, long. Just one question. Yeah, one Thank question. You. The the big grant is is for could be moorings, could be dock extensions, could be uh, anything to accommodate uh, boaters. Twenty six foot trans, trans long. visiting boaters. Yes, visiting yeah. boaters. Yeah. So so what I looked into before is is it's right there. Um, with C flex and 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 a dock, so I'll spend that thirty grand very easy. But but they Bingo, only Jeff, have hundred, so, the, 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 sorry Jeff they only have one hundred ninety thousand dollars though to distribute you know available for all of the communities in Connecticut. This is this tier, well, tier one I'll, program. I'll take it all. Yeah. <laughs> you like your style, Jeff. And give me uh just give me a give me a call. Jeff and we'll uh, we'll go All through right. a, a few things. Okay, great. That's great news. Thank you, Jeff. Any questions for Jeff? Uh, I'm going to ask Owen. Owen, are you on the call? I think he's always with us in spirit at this point. Uh, Commissioner Barkish, it's to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just really quickly, so our um, May 22nd meeting, uh, no, excuse me, our May 2nd meeting. No, I got this wrong. I'm sorry. In, we're into June. So um, we did review 13 Seabreeze um, that Mr. Hiltz presented, tabled it for a site inspection. Um, we're looking for a low tide to do that and volunteers regarding same. Um, Maybe if uh, members of this commission could email you if they're interested and we'll catch a low tide likely on a weekday and uh, just run out there and get it. That was our only new business. So uh, thanks a lot. And permits for recreational shell fishing are available at Fisherman's World in Liberty Square. And as always, eat Norwalk shellfish. Thanks, Al. Owen was on the call. I just uh, I couldn't unmute it fast enough. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was First the question? All, let me finish. I just want to thank Steve for his participation. And uh, um, do you have a report, uh, Harbor Master's report for, for us from uh, Harbor Master Lavallo? The only business was uh, regarding the Harbor Master boat. Um, and I believe most folks know that the um, the motor is, is done. The uh, lower unit is fused to the power head, so we can't even get the motor apart at this point. So, so we're looking for a new uh, uh, a new motor. Um, I have a couple of calls I can make. I think we just do, do a little due diligence for 24 hours to see if we can hunt down a, a motor that will fit. I know we have uh, something that... Um, I have a little more guy. on that. So, uh, yeah, I have a little bit so more information on that. Uh, you want to share or... No, uh, during my report. Okay. <laughs> Very well. Thank you. Are you, are you all set? I am all set. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, moving right along, mooring and harbor safety, Mr. Mangles. Okay. So uh, I took a look at the last year's online mooring. Uh, how many moorings we had out there? There were 129 in in. 2023 there's only 116 so far uh i do know that the harbor master is getting uh information on on that uh as far as the transient moorings this this is um uh one of the things that that came up just yesterday and recreation and parks uh was very good about it so ken uh, you know hats off to ken he he uh late 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 uh, text messages to Ken Hughes. Uh, they we we may want to consider having a, a parking spot or two. One of the uh, long-term 
transient and mooring people rented a car, wanted to know where they could park it. So without getting a ticket and all of that good stuff. So uh, Ken was very helpful with uh, putting in plate numbers and giving them access, uh, letting, letting people know, parking authority, I guess, know that that is an okay car to be there. So we should think about that uh, in the future. And I'll speak with recreation and parks, see if we can uh, get that uh, going. Uh, as far as, uh, and I don't wanna do anything with, about the newsletter, but an article could be done. Uh, a transient boater uh, who is still on the, who's still on the hook, he is actually doing the loop. So that would be a very good uh, article to, to do. And, and Norwalk is uh, one of his stops, even though it's not really the loop, it's off the loop. Um, but that would be uh, something pretty good uh, to, uh, as, a, as an article. Uh, the transient mooring uh, balls, as you know, have been ordered. The ship date is for September of this year. That's due to uh, uh, resin that they're waiting for. Uh, all the mooring fields have been paid for. Dakwa, so far we have had 16 vessels, 49 nights. Uh, I had to turn away a few people because their, their boats were a little too big. Uh, not so much in length, but in depth, so seven feet. So I have, we have to address that. Hopefully during some dredging, we can get get some dredging done as well uh, around that area. Uh, $1,960 in revenue so far. Uh, regarding the Harbor Master vessel, so this is the extra information that we have and uh, Deputy Harbor Master Lee uh, stated that yes, it is fused. The lower unit is fused to the uh, power head. It is, that's, uh, that's done. So um, uh, Billy Landon did say that there is a 250, 250 horse two stroke that may be available somewhere around the cost of $5,000. Uh, I think that we should go for that. We were going to spend somewhere around $6,000, uh, but we need to get that <clears throat> boat, uh, available. So, uh, if that is available, we can, uh, let's take a, uh, let's take a motion to, uh, let's have a motion to replace the current four stroke system. Yeah, I know. Um, I would rather have a four stroke, but, uh, let's go with the, uh, the two stroke 250 and, uh, see if Billy can get that, uh, get that mounted and, and done. So we need a motion to spend the, spend the money. We had the money spent anyway with the, how, how old that engine, Jeff? Oh, no, I oh, have very little it's going to yeah, be a bandaid uh, anyway. It's currently a 250. So two, oh yeah, it's a 250 or a 200 on there, four stroke. Four That's a little, little heavy, you know, it's heavier. It's a, uh, it's a 2008 uh, Yamaha 225 of the oh, it's a 225. Okay. Okay. Just for, uh, I mean, called Allen Outboard down in, uh, in Queens. They're the best outboard dealer around. They've got, this is a used outboard, but. They, we they don't want to spend a lot of money re, on this. They do refurbs, but they've got their they've got everything. It might be worth a poke, but it's also down in Queens. Uh, yeah, I think we ought to have to make a few calls around. Also, we could hit up Rex and Cove to see if they have anything sitting around and and, and back uh, that would they make be willing to help us out a little bit on the price or something like that for a used used engine. I just think that we ought to uh, do our deal due diligence. Uh, you know, this is I something that should be should be I bid heard. anyway, rather than just. Uh, I've reached out price. to I've reached out to all of our local um, folks, and unfortunately, they don't have anything that fits that specification um, currently. Um, the uh, the The issue is, I guess, when they repower boats these days, those motors usually get trashed, or um, you know, somebody rebuilds them and repurposes them. So there's there's currently in Norwalk, as of a month and a half ago. And uh, it, it, there's there's nothing available, so I, I think the best bet is you know trying to extend out a little bit. Mm 
Yes. So I do believe that we need to do something relatively quick. And I remember that, you know, when all of this came, came about that we were looking at, uh, you know, local, local area marinas to see if they had something. Uh, but we definitely need to, uh, to get, get moving. July. Yeah, let's try, let's try to get it shorter this week, but I, I think we should, we need to have a, a some other options besides just just one a solo choice is my is my view on that. But Chris, did you do you have a, a contact that you can make make a call? Yeah, I can reach out. I will have to get. Uh, I asked uh, Harbor Master to, to give us a, a just a spec of what you know what was required, so everybody's asking for the same thing. Is that all right with Jeff? Just to, to we don't have to have a meeting to. Uh, well, let's so allocate we'll funds up to yeah. x, x just, amount of money yeah I, I'd, I'd like to allocate yeah. you know was it six thousand yeah. just just to get you something across the finish line and you know give us 24 to 48 hours just to confirm what the the closest yeah. cheapest best most efficient option is and just move on it well yeah. for, for matter of discussion then i have a um i'll second that if we need to end a discussion that's fine i have a note from last month that the city will pay for the harbor master boat six thousand five hundred dollars um i don't have total recall of what i know that we talked about this last month um but is that is it is it on this commission to pay for that that's all i'm asking i guess or was there something else going on as, as far as i know that this, the city is stated that they would pay the bill we believe the bill to be uh six thousand five hundred dollars if Billy could pull the the motor apart and do what he needed to do, but he can't get the motor apart. So, um, right. but they stated that they would pay that six thousand five hundred. Um, I can make a call and see if that would transfer over to a replacement motor to the vessel. Yeah, I could I could find out from Jessica. We can right. we can do that. I have a couple of calls I can make to some uh, friends in the business too. Not that not that. We're steering business, but just that, that you know, people like to contribute to the, their city, and I think that's uh, uh, you know a good opportunity for us. People want to give us uh, help us on price or something. But, so let's so allocate we do our due diligence. Uh, so yeah. we we've uh, so I made a motion, and uh, Chris McDonald, I believe you seconded it. Up to sixty five hundred, like we were going to spend the last time. Uh, well, I mean, my point was that the city was we were not going to spend that the last time. The city was going to spend it, right? Okay. Sure. Um, so that that we request up to sixty five hundred dollars from the city, right? And yeah, I amend my my motion to request up to sixty five hundred or uh, thereabouts, <laughs> up to sixty five hundred for uh, the city to allocate funds to re repower right. the. Uh, the harbor master boat right yeah i'll second that yeah okay i mean all in favor uh discussion go ahead chris well so yeah i'd be in favor if, if we, we confront the money to get this done asap because i think that's yes. you know we, we're not gonna wait till september to do this we want the boat we want the boat in the water if that can so we can we can certainly front the money and we will seek reimbursement from wherever in the city is promising this you know um mm -hmm. So I, you know, if we want, so if that's the way going, I think that's what we were saying. And I just wanted to clarify that. Thanks, Chris. I, yeah, that, that's a good point that yet we'll, we'll pay for it as long as, you know, we get the, the money back. Yeah. Okay. So have we, uh, we should vote on the allocation of the, of the funds, right? Did we do that? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yep. You're the chair. Thank you. All in favor? <laughs> All in favor? I... Opposed? Done. Um, quick, quick question, Owen. Um, who just you said that uh, you'd reached out to a couple of local people. Who, who, who did you specifically talk to, just to so we don't double efforts? Absolutely, we co uh, we contacted Cove and Rex, um, and we also uh, contacted. Um, um, oh, geez. Um, total. Okay. Hmm. 
And, and, and just for the sake of getting these guys back on the water, do we want to put like, you know, kind of an internal timestamp on this? Like, you know, if we, if we can find a better engine by one of the 15th or something, we'll, we'll do it. Or do well, we I think, want... I think, I think we're looking at a, a 24 hours or, oh, okay. You know, I think we're about think by it's... Friday. Yeah. About that's Friday. Friday is the, is the, uh, decision point. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Are you done, Chef? I'm done. Thank course. you. Yep. Done. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Finance. So, um for yeah, for uh plans and recommendations. We've uh and I'm gonna ask uh um, Amelia for an update. We got in we did get notified from Amelia that the the award of the um strategic harbor plan study is imminent. With the consultant Indigo, um, is there any update on that, Amelia? That was about two weeks ago. We heard. Um, no, there is not an update on that yet. I don't believe the contract has been signed yet. Okay. But as soon as it is, then there's plans to have the once it's signed, we'll have um a plan to meet with the steering committee for like a kickoff meeting between the between the Perfect. consultant and the steering committee. Perfect. Thanks. Um, okay. Uh, and nothing. Else in terms of um, plans and recommendations um, for for treasurer, I've uh, let me share because I didn't have time to send this out. But this I sort of did. So the city runs on a on a. Um, am I sharing? Can you see it? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, the city runs on a July 1st, July 1st fiscal year. So um, I've put the latest update from Marianne, Mariana. Um, a little bit smaller, see it's at the bottom. Um, so, and I, other people would be curious because we used to run on a um, annual calendar year. So this is, this is since, this is the monthly since July. So the 23, 24 fiscal year, I think the, the important numbers are at the bottom here. We basically we we had total ex, um, expenses of twenty three thousand and total. Um, this is wrong. No, that's basically we had a sur we had we had a pretty big surplus for the year. This one should this one shows a little better. Um, uh the expenditures we had, the actuals were forty six, and the revenue was sixty nine. So yeah, twenty. We we took in twenty three thousand dollars more than we spent, um, July first to July first. Um, you know, we 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 budgeted a lot of things for, um, transient mooring, um, and uh, we underran planning consultants by not eight thousand. So. Uh, we we left a lot of money on the table. We also um, we we did we budgeted seventy seven and seventy seven. Um, we took in sixty nine, and that is without getting any of the grant money from the city or the health department or anybody else. So um, we we st we still ran a surplus of twenty three thousand dollars without our grant money for the calendar year. Um, if you're curious about the. Uh, uh, so the 23 is the 23 is the, is the extra for the calendar year 2023 we ran we we ran a surplus of seventy five hundred dollars um I mean that ac the, the calendar year actually accurate more accurately reflects you know what we spent because um our expenses and revenues you know run right through the end of the calendar year so it's hard to por portion those so you know any the, the boat repairs I'll pull that back into into this this existing fiscal year fiscal year we're closing just because um that's a, that's a big chunk of money we certainly have it in this year's budget so that that's kind of where we stand um we put in a pretty good chunk of money put in a pretty big big request last for the 2025 79 we went up a few thousand dollars but um you know the with the with the increase in the mooring fees with the with the um the transient mooring starting to generate income. You know, I think we're we're in we're in a really good 
place um, and we should keep going forward with these projects that we've been planning. Any questions? All right. Yeah, I, I just I have just one observation, is, and as I believe that some of the difficulty that, where I get confused is that the our bylaws uh, say that our fiscal year is January to December, um, and the city bylaws are from J, uh, J, uh, June to July. You know, so it's a it's a really awkward kind of situation that we have. We should probably address that at some point. Right. Just the difference. Thank you, Chris. Um, sure. I, I thought um, and this, this is kind of embarrassing, but I'll just just think, I thought we discussed uh, about Laurie Jones taking over the uh, plans and recommendations piece. Did we not? Oh, sorry. A while I... ago. It's okay, Chris. If you want it, <laughs> I've been trying to re relieve Chris of some of all these. Uh, um, things not in a, a negative way, just in giving more time because it's a lot of uh, dealing with the money is kind of takes a lot of time with the city and and uh, the treasurer's office in the city and all. Uh, did I not tell you about that, Chris? I mean, did we not? Talk did about I? That? Yeah, oh, I didn't. Yeah. Yes. Now that you say that, I yeah. Um. If nobody objects uh, going forward, I thought it was a, a fair to have Laurie sort of take that on and, and give you a little bit of a break from. Kind of the heavy heavy duty part of a piece of the uh, uh, plan, uh, financial management. We could talk. You can talk, we can talk later about that. I just it's a little bit of misunderstanding, I guess. Um, so it's to and thank you for your report, Chris. Laurie Jones. Yep, just uh, uh, pulling together a group of people to work on the harbor management plan today i got a full uh, pdf clean or word doc um updated clean copy from jeff jeff thank you so much um for all your work getting that to me along with super helpful input um i know i i think the first step is to understand how the plan is being used and by whom so that if it's not as if being used as efficiently as or as helpfully as it should be, we can make improvements in that. Um, I'd love to hear from P and Z whether they feel that applicants actually refer to it and um, are educated when they submit their applications. So um, the next steps are to, I know we have this I put together a small but mighty team that hopefully everybody agrees to be on it, which is Mike, Chris, and Jeff, uh, Jeff Mangles, with obviously critical input from Jeff Sedman, and also Chris, you, as a really important liaison with the city so that we can work alongside the strategic plan that they're working on. Okay. And not duplicate, but um, build together to be stronger. Uh, you know, just make sure that we're all along the same lines. So um, that's it for now. I think, you know, now that we have finally a cleaned up copy of it, we can go from there. So that's that. Uh, so that, the, I, I always, every time I I go to the, our the city website to look up anything, I, I'm just embarrassed in the fact that of what's there is our, is our uh, the harbor plan. Can, can we... Uh, with Amelia, so, sort of replace what's on the Harbor Commission page so that it's the current document that doesn't have all those. I believe it's, and... yeah, I, Jeff, you can correct me. I think it's missing maybe just the footnote section, but other than that, it's, and maybe some illustrations, I'm not sure, but certainly the verbiage is all there. And I have sent that to Amelia. I just sent that to Amelia this afternoon. It's just that what's on the website, uh, it, at least what comes I, up when I, I get agree. it. I totally agree. My, it's pages of crossouts and things like that. Just just a couple of comments. Yeah, yes, Lori. So that, that's a clean copy. And Tony Mobilia had also a, a role in doing that. We, we worked on that together to, to remove the annotations. And my only thought might be is not to refer to that as an embarrassment because there's a tremendous amount of work that went into that. And, and the, the policies are good. And one, one of the things that I, I talked about this with Lori 
again, my opinion that the most important thing with respect to the Harbor Management Plan is how it deals with the authority of the Harbor Management Commission relative to deep authority. And that, that authority was, is, is, well, was eliminated by the court decision. So there are a number of other towns that are working to update their harbor management plans. And so we're coordinating the approach that they're taking in that last chapter for implementation to, to specify that the commission's, the commission's recommendations pursuant to the plan are to be binding on DEEP. And that's what DEEP has approved in other plans, but what the court decision has, has you know, not just called into question, but, but ruled against. So other towns are, and I, I sent you that section, Lori, uh, that other towns are, are pursuing. And if we we're all yep. on the same page with this, we have, we have a, the strength of other Harbor Management Commissions going to deep with, with this. This is what we believe should be in the plan for, with respect to the commission's authority. This is what you've approved in other plans. And we expect you to approve it now and to help us get the legislative change next year to, to clarify this. So, so there's a lot of, there's, well, anyway, you, we, whatever input you that you wish and i can share with what the other towns are doing but that section Great. on authority in my opinion is the most important thing that, that we're dealing with but that, that's that's just my input mike and i also, see you have a question yeah thanks Lori. the uh, just, just to clarify a process question here the ad hoc committee that you're pulling together the th the four of us to kind of discuss this this is so you've mentioned a, a, a version that has now now gone to Amelia. Is that simply the harbor management plan as it now exists, or is this correct? Yeah. Okay. Correct. And so because the one be... on the website ha is annotated, it has all the it. What it does yeah. is it shows basically track changes of the changes that were made. So now we can start with a clean version, and my hope is that. Each of us can take a section because it's a huge document right. and, you know, focus on a section and then come back to each other with input from Jeff and um, to sort of tackle it that way. But first, Excellent. really understanding who's the audience, you know, who, yeah, who's that's... actually using it and how can we make it the most helpful for them? Right. So I, I, I printed it out. This is this is how thick it is, guys. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, th I think we should take a higher level view and see how much their redundancy there is in this thing. So in instead of having I everybody, say, it, instead everybody go off with one section and make each section twice as big, I right. think maybe we need to, to look structurally at it to see how much redundancy, you know, how many, how many times the same paragraph description is, is, is perpetrated, you know, in each section and stuff like that. But I, I'd appreciate it if we could, if we could all get an updated copy. I'm not going to. I think I'm going to print it out again. I no, I think, <laughs> and Amelia, I don't know um, what your feeling is. My hope is that the one I sent today, although Jeff, I'm going to ask you, I, I believe you said that it was missing maybe some footnotes and illustrations. You know, the, foot, the footnotes and, and uh, when, when Tony and I prepared the republished copy, we, we didn't include a, a number of new photos to keep it emailable. But the, what, what's missing from that document was was the Appendices of the Harbor the Management, appendices. the State Harbor Management Act, the Chapter 69 of, of the Norwalk Code, and the Corps of Engineers guidelines, and and also the the uh, the mo the mooring and anchoring rules. So th those Is, stand by themselves. Those, okay, those items that you just mentioned are those currently on the website at the end of the Harbor Management Plan that's currently on the website. I have to I have to check and see. I, I, oh, I believe okay. Because I was going to say, if those don't change, we can just pull from I, there. They don't change, but if they're not, I'll just send them, send them over, and we can put them separately. It just made the document easier to email to leave out the, the those correct the, the copies of the legislation that that applies. Correct. Okay. All right. So I'll talk to Amelia about getting it up on the website. All right. That's it. Well, can we get a copy? Can we get a copy. Oh, of can it? you get a copy beforehand? Yeah. Absolutely. The other yeah, I'll forward it to you. I'm sorry, Lori. The other, th the other thing, Lori. The other thing, Lori, is I, I'm going to. Oh, my internet connection is unstable. But I also have to provide a copy of that to the Connecticut Port Authority when when we submit our our uh, our grant application. Um, that, that, but that, that again, that that's that's what we'll do. Okay, Mike. Oh, no, no, sorry, that okay. was a, a missed dial. 
Okay. okay. Thank you, Lori. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, Mr. Commissioner White. <clears throat> yes, uh, I've got, uh, I'd say about 50-ish percent there on the newsletter. Um, Jeff, if you could pass me the information for that guy on the uh, on the mooring ball, that sounds pretty cool. And uh, and yeah, I'll send a Word document version out, um, and you guys can have a look at it, and then we'll put it into the into the layout and send it off. I got a bunch of good pictures the other day while I was out sailing. Well, not sailing, floating. Um, so it was, but it, it's coming together. I, I was hoping to have it by tonight, but my summer has been a little bit nutty. Um, but you know, we're getting there. We'll have it before it's fall. Don't worry. Any questions for Chris? Thanks, Chris. Very much appreciate it. Um, that brings us to new business. Is there any new business to uh, bring to the floor? Um, Alan, I, I, I quick mention, if that's okay, yeah. about your email sure. from two days ago that I had the chance to uh, respond once I was wheels down at LaGuardia a couple of years ago or a couple hours ago and then rushed over for this meeting about the the oyster trail you were mentioning that yeah you know first reaction a little bit of disappointment that we weren't able to align our plans um, that is the uh, Norwalk oyster trail with the state's kind of surprise announcement at least in my eyes of the Connecticut oyster trail in the email that I sent you, you know, I kind of see this as an opportunity. We now have the state momentum. Uh, Jeff Stedman has been really great at talking with the Sea Grant folks. I think I mentioned this last month, but there's been radio silence for a few months now. And so I've been going to meetings, we've been going to oyster events and all of that. And once we get that final, well, we're going to do this state and Norwalk kind of together, right? Harbor management crew and, and they, they kind of go, yeah, sure. And so we got scooped on that larger announcement, but I want to be clear that at least in my eyes, that's more of a broad promotional thing. Ours, and the reason it's taking a little bit longer, is specific uh, to Norwalk, and I think it's going to be quite an improvement on the general concept, as long as the state is amenable to that. So again, Jeff has been great with that. We've got a map ready to go. I need a little bit further buy-in from the city on our restaurants, our eat, and I need to get with Commissioner Bartush here coming up on, you know, Norwalk grown or eat Norwalk oysters, whatever it is, but we're pretty close to a lot of these different items. So don't lose hope yet is what I'm trying to say. I didn't lose hope. I, I was just, I didn't know if that, what I found, what I saw there was, was the, was what it, what it all uh, had come to pass. That's all. No, unfortunately, sure. the timing just didn't work. Uh, I was out of my control. I wish I had some sort of pull with uh, state folks. I'm I'm too new here to Connecticut, I, I think, to make that happen. But you know, we'll uh, we'll, we'll use it to our advantage. Terrific, Jeff. Just to correct, Mike, he gave me credit for doing a lot, but I I actually haven't done a whole lot. Is what, what we were, what I was supposed to do, but but we we have put together three potential base maps. One, one is the old 1800s shellfish map of, of Connecticut. The other is a, you know, a current uh, Google Earth image, a satellite image. And then we have the navigation chart that, we're, that, we, that we put at the same scale so that we can interchange. And then we have these, those the wonderful images from the murals in City Hall that, that, we, that, we're, that we can include in, into those drawings or in, into the maps for, for, for making a nice, presentation on the history of oystering in, in, in Norwalk. And Mike mentioned it was a surprise with this state initiative. The Bureau of Aquaculture, interestingly, had very little input into that. And uh, when, when we talked with them subsequently there and told them that the director what we're intending to do in Norwalk, he, he expressed his support uh, you know, to, to work with us. And if we can come up with a nice presentation that will, well, anyway, I'm, I'm going on, but but there's it's a real opportunity to, to make a uh, an educational presentation and to promote to promote the city um, and it, and re, the, the Norwalk we talked about that at the Norwalk River Watershed Initiative today too that the that the reason that Norwalk was selected as the port, as the, the Norwalk River Watershed is the first watershed based plan in Connecticut was because of the shellfish resources 
and yeah. and and because of the concern that that a bacteria ups runoff would would have an adverse effect on on the shellfish resources. So there's a big opportunity. We, we, but you know, and, and thanks, Mike, for including me. We'll, we'll, no, we'll it, get something it, positive. Jeff, just to, no, thank thank you, and just to put a bow on this. I know everybody needs to leave, but it's a little bit of my initial disappointment was this is so much more than we're going to put a map together and put visit Connecticut and say it's the trail, right? And it should yeah. start here. This should be, but this is Oyster Town. Uh, again, we're still in the running for a proclamation during this Oyster Festival to, to really get this thing in motion. So none of that has mm -hmm. gone away. It has taken a lot longer than I expected, but I think that's because we have some folks trying to kind of do it themselves. So we'll, we'll work it out. And maybe for the Oyster Festival, we could have a, a presentation poster that, that could be yep. distributed beforehand. And, and I, I think that's a great idea. We, thank, thank you. Thanks. That's it out of me. Thank you, Commissioner Matthews. Any questions for Chris? I'm, I'm sorry for Mike. That new business, anyone have any new business? Is it a call for adjournment then? Is there a motion? Mr. Gifford, Mr. White seconds, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Thank you all for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. I just sent you. Congratulations on an hour and 24 minute meeting. Yeah, very oh, nice. Very yeah, nice. Know. A new record. I mean, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Let's, let's try to get it to uh, 50, uh, 58 minutes. Uh, Chris uh, Chris <laughs> White, I, uh, I just sent so you have, the, the contact information. We, and we have, awesome. there, and that way we can meet at the bar afterwards. So it'd be more yeah, fun. Absolutely. So. There you go. Here, here's an idea that I had before. We should have a, com a Harbor Commission raft up. We all got boats. Ooh. Oh, sign me up. Mm. Sign me up. And while, while we're where would we digging, where would we do that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, you probably got one of the deeper draft boats. Where can you go in the islands that we could all draft up? I got five feet, so I get out of the the cops basin easily. Uh, that's a, oh, you do okay. Yeah. Well, all right. Yeah. 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 Well, any yeah. place, any place, and then we can we we can go dig some clams. Yeah. There you go. And shuck some oysters. We just are shucking. And shuck yeah. some oysters. Sucking and shucking. Yeah. I'll get yeah. the I'll get the paddle board blown up and join you. There you go. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Good to see okay. you all. Take care. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Bye.